I was disappointed in the Bucks. Mm. Minus Giannis Antetokounmpo. Minus? Yep, he's not Adetokounmpo today. He's Antetokounmpo. Remember, <laughs> I call him by his Greek name when he loses. So Giannis, for the rest of the offseason, my friend. Ooh. Not even my Nigerian brother. Oh, For damn. the rest of the offseason, my friend, Giannis, you're just Antetokounmpo. Not Ugo. <laughs> no. Um, so, just I'm disappointed, Sal. Why? Because what? how in God's name hmm. do you all lose a game six game when Giannis has 44 and 20? How is that possible? Oh, we're going back, yeah. Like, do you understand in game six and game <laughs> seven, Giannis combined for 69 points and 40 boards? 69 points and 40 boards between two games, and you lost them both? by a combined 41 points? Mm. In what land, in what sport, in what country can you combine for 69 and 40 in two <laughs> games and your team lose? America. I'm disappointed <laughs> because how in the world, Drew Holiday, do you go 0 for 6 from 3 in game 7? Try to warn you. How in the world, Brooke Lopez, mm. do you go one for five from three in game seven? Mm. How in the world, Pat Connaughton, I'm listening. do you go 0 for six from three in game seven? How in the world, Grayson Allen? Oh, stop. We reaching that far now? Here's why. We grab a GA again? Here is why. What? If you, Brooke yeah, Lopez, game. can't make threes, what you doing on the court? Because mm. you are foot slow. So if you can't spread out the defense, so. then what are you doing on the court? Pat mm. Connaughton, mm. if you can't make threes, then what are you doing on the court? Because you can D up Jason Tatum, so now you are a liability. When I run a cost-benefit analysis, which is what any business is supposed to do, I always want to ask, what is the benefit of this and what is it costing me? Okay. The benefit of Pat Connaughton, oh, he's a threat from three. But what is he costing me? He is a liability on defense. The mm -hmm. benefit of Brooke Lopez, he can stretch out the defense because from a big man, he can shoot the three. But what is he costing me? Boy, is he heavy-footed. <laughs> so if you no longer provide me a benefit, Pat Connaughton, if you no longer provide me a benefit, Grayson Allen, if you no longer provide me a benefit, Brooke Lopez, then I'll, now I'm only looking at the cost. And y'all costing me a whole lot. Mm. Obviously, the Celtics were impressive. I know you're going to praise the Celtics. So I oh, you know? You so. know? You go? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know you need to do so. But boy, am I disappointed. You can't squander one of the greatest playoff performances we have ever seen oh, without okay. me being disappointed. Mm. And the Bucks squandered one of the greatest <clears throat> playoff performances by Giannis we've seen in the history of the sport. Oh, you have changed my mind because I was on the fence. I didn't know what to do. I was in somebody's backyard. They're like, hey, who that? And I was like, I don't know which side to hop on. Go back home or, hey, I, I'm here. I'm already committed. <laughs> Let's go. Ah, but I'm going to stick with my guns. And I was impressed by the Celtics. Why? Number one defense went against the third worst offense. Who won that? Number one defense. So I'm impressed because you guys went out there and did what you're supposed to do. Now, what did they do in being the number one defense? Milwaukee, who averaged 115 points a game in the regular season, third in the NBA, but mm, was held to 110 points or fewer in all seven games. That defense said, ah, where y'all going now? Got Otto up here looking fresh, talking about Grayson Allen, like you're going to count on him. Boy, stop. He had one game. All right. All of a sudden, you were held under 90 points twice. We saw that. Game six and game seven. Mm, mm, mm. Averaging only 88 points. Let me tell you what happened here. Giannis got tired, boss. Simple as that. Giannis got tired, boss. Let me give it to you like this. He didn't. I, I can't even let you say that. He oh, didn't get tired, oh, sir. Okay. Okay. I, I look forward to the contention. I look forward to the fight. Giannis in game seven shot 38%. Mm -hmm. Is that normal? Mm -hmm. It's game seven. It matters. He's a champion. He's clutch. He's great in elimination games. What happened, boss? 25 and 20. In uh, uh, mm, uh, five turnovers in the last three games. Game five, game six, game seven. 25, 20, and nine. Tie, boss. 36 turnovers for the series, the most in his career in the playoffs. Tire boss. 25, 20, and 9. Okay, I got one more. Plus, minus, minus 20 for Giannis. Game 7. 25, <laughs> 20. Now, I hope that covers up. All, I hope that's enough makeup to make you think Giannis was out there balling. Look, Giannis gave it his full effort, and I praise him for that. They were undermanned. However, you got to also know when you're undermanned, when to fight and when to run, when to employ others to help save your butt. And in this situation, Giannis didn't do that. 
Giannis found himself in a position where we've seen even rookies know what to do in moments like this. I'll go back to Irvin Magic Johnson when playing with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as a rookie. And even him knows when I'm under man how to go out there and get it done. Not just in point production, not just in all the statistical categories, but in the win column. So what I saw from Giannis is a guy who was doing too much in this series, became more inefficient every <laughs> single game, turnover happy, and finally it caught up to him. The only saving grace is there was no Chris Middleton, my number five winner, for a reason. Outside of that, Giannis, you were out there trying, but you did let your team down. Sal, watch your mouth. Truth be told. It's kind of hard. Watch your mouth. Um, hard. I wouldn't talk about MJ, and you best not talk about Giannis. Oh, hold because on, you changed his name already, so you ain't really watch, feeling Giannis. Watch your mouth. Here's the thing. <laughs> Giannis is supposed to be the worst three-point shooter on the Bucks. Okay. But how in game seven did he actually have the best three-point percentage? Damn. Of all the Bucks oh, that man. attempted threes, and I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Bucks players attempted threes, mm. and Giannis had the second best percentage behind Bobby Portis of all nine. Mm. And Giannis is the worst. So don't tell me that Giannis was tired. Giannis still stepped up more than everybody else. What? Giannis gave you 25 points, 20 boards, mm -hmm. and nine assists. That's not saying I'm tired. Mind you, he gave you that after he gave you 44 and 20 in game six. Now, was Giannis off? Surely Giannis was off. But Giannis being off is not a matter of fatigue. Giannis being off is a matter of being off. Be disappointed in the Bucks, <laughs> But don't you dare fix your lips to be disappointed <laughs> in Giannis Ugo. And he's Ugo again because I got to take I got to take cover for my dog. Don't you dare be disappointed in Giannis. 25, 20, and 9. I need somebody else. So, the Bucks were <laughs> yeah. 4 of 33 from 3. Yeah, yeah. Without Giannis, yeah. the Bucks were three yeah. of 29 yeah, yeah. from three. The Bucks team uh -huh. was atrocious. Uh -huh. Giannis, incredibly impressive. The Bucks as a team, no sense. Yeah, <laughs> they shot 12.1, don't forget the point one percent from three. And you giving Giannis props because he shot better than that average. He shot better than the rest of those failing players outside of Bobby Porter's from three, right? That standard is the same parent that walks up to me and said, my son is smarter than Tommy. Tommy's an F student, ma'am. We're not talking about the bottom. We're not talking about 12% and using that as perspective. We're saying, Giannis, you're better than this. We're saying, Giannis, you got fatigue because those turnovers tell me something. Giannis, you got fatigue because you shot 38% from the field. Giannis, you damn near seven feet. Every play ends at the rim. And let me tell you why he's fatigued, and you know this for real. Two things I got to tell you. The first one is, when you're tired, y'all, it's not the beginning of the play. It wasn't Giannis and his speed. It wasn't Giannis making his moves. Look how he finished. Look how he missed all of those layups. Look how he missed all of those bunnies. You want to know why? Because when you're fatigued, you can't finish. It's not you can't start. You can't finish. Giannis did all the same moves that he normally does. And then he gets right by the rim, and what happens? The rim start moving away. No, sir. Because of that no, sir. fatigue. No, sir. Answer that. I'll, I'll, give you a, I'll give you the best answer of the day. You sure? Here's how I know Giannis was not tired. And then after the game, here, here you go. When they took him out two minutes ago. <sighs> here is how I know Giannis was not tired. He was tired, boss. There were three minutes, 39 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Three minutes, 39 seconds left in the fourth quarter. I'm going to talk y'all to it because before the show, I did not ask for the play, so we can't roll it for y'all. Three minutes, 39 seconds. Let's go. It was a 22-point game. Mm. The Bucks were losing 97 to 75. Giannis, ball, 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 ball. Full court pressing Jason Tatum. Giannis should not even be in the game because mm -hmm. the game is over. It's right. But Giannis is pressing Jason Tatum mm -hmm. full court. Gets a steal on Jason Tatum mm -hmm. in the backcourt and goes and gets a dunk. You do not full court press oh, yeah. when you're tired. Oh. You don't full court press oh. down by 22 oh. when oh. you're tired. Oh. But he full court press oh. down by 22. Got a steal from the best player in the series, second to himself in Jason Tatum, and goes and finishes it. That is when I knew this man is not playing tired. So even if he was fatigued, we didn't notice his fatigue, so I cannot blame him for any fatigue that was absent. Ooh. Giannis Ooh, was let's not go. to let's go. be blamed in that series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you could be tired and not tap out. You could be tired and do all the same beats, all the same theater as when you're 
out there feeling fresh. Come on now. Let me tell you this. When you start something, that is not showing you the fatigue. It's how you finish. I gave you the finish. And, and, no, here's the finish. Did the pinky flex? Did you did you pop the wrist? I gave you the finish. Did you finish the bunny at the rim? Giannis, time and time again, they have a montage of it. Miss, miss, miss. He shot 38% for a reason. Let me tell you why. And I'm not blaming him fully. I'm just telling you the circumstances that led to this circumstance. Giannis went out there man versus team. Me versus team, man versus team, you're going to lose. This is the NBA, bro. I don't give a damn who you are. One-on-one, -on -one, I tell you and I fight, you feel like you got a fighting chance, right? You versus me and my homie. you like, okay, I don't want this, but I could take this. Me versus two of my homies, now you're starting to think, who else around me to help me out, right? It's starting to get that way. It taxed Giannis. And I give it to you like this. It happens to me every night. It's called witching hour. And they usually talk about it from a parent to a kid. Witching hour is around 6 o'clock, right before they go to bed. They getting tired, boss, and you getting tired, too, because you've been chasing them around all day. So you still go into their room. You still read them the story. You still sitting there like, I love you, MJ, Raya, Olivia. Oh, it's a great night. But then all of a sudden, they want to start playing because they witching hour. They about to start spazzing. I want to play with the Legos. You sit, you know what you do? Put that Lego down. Why? Because you tired. You ain't got it. You can't finish. It's not how you start it. It's how you finish when you fatigue. How did Giannis finish? How was game seven? Another five turnover game? Another game where you're shooting 38%? That's when I knew that Giannis was fatigued. And then he put a button on it, going to the sideline, doing this. What you doing that for if you ain't fatigued? Giannis bro? was okay. complete. I'm not going to say he was, he was complete. So he was complete. I can't look at turnovers as a mark of fatigue because Jason Tatum had seven. Yeah. And I can't, so I, and Jason Tatum only played 36. And he, didn't, and he didn't play his best game either. So I can't, but, but that's not a mark of fatigue to me. Okay. So the mark of, you ain't play your best game. Okay. If I look at this game, I look at the fact that nobody on the Bucks bench stepped up. That's real. While everybody on the Celtics bench stepped up. Grant Williams, I'm going to give him his respect. Yeah. Pritchard, I'm going to give him his respect. They turned into Larry Bird and Ray Allen all of a sudden mm. reincarnate. I will give them their respect. Mm. As for the Bucks, outside of Giannis, embarrassing. But Giannis having 69 point sell and 40 boards in back to back ga in two games collectively, there's no fatigue. And if there is, mm -hmm. if I can't notice your fatigue, then your fatigue is irrelevant. So why did he make all those layups he normally makes? Just th the rim move? It got higher? The net? Was it you got the good lighting? days, you got bad days, big dog, but it ain't all fatigue. Okay, we'll get to that another time. I like that. I'm tired of talking about this, so I'm fatigued.